Hello everybody, I am Keaton and this is Good Catholic, Season 12, Episode 20. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful Tuesday so far. Now before we get into today's video, if you want to like the video and please click the red subscribe button down below, that would be greatly appreciated as uh, we are trying to reach more subscribers because it really it really does help this ministry to expand, help this ministry to grow. Now what I want to talk about today is something that I've never talked about on a video and it's something that doesn't get a lot of attention within the Catholic Church and that is a confraternity um, and, and sort of what it is and what it means within the church because it can sound like a confusing word but it's actually a lot more simple than one might think. I do want to say this topic is viewer suggested so if you have any topics uh, that you would like to be talked about please email me directly at kidcatholic1 at gmail.com go to my website kidcatholic.com and click the contact me page or just comment any um like topics but down below that you want me to use for future videos so a confraternity and just the dictionary definition taken outside of the catholic church is defined as a society devoted especially to a religious or charitable cause now when we look at the catholic encyclopedia and see um how it defines confraternity it says a confraternity is a voluntary association of the faithful established and guided by competent ecclesiastical authority for the promotion of special works of christian charity or piety so what it is is it's a group of lay people now that is important a group of lay people who comes together to form somewhat of, of a society is what you could say uh, to work together in in prayer and to grow closer to christ together now this isn't just something the catholic church made up randomly recently because they decided to uh this has been traced back to the sixth century in constantinople uh in, in france like it has gone on for a very long time and it's always really been a thing but again never given as much attention as it should now there's not just one kind of confraternity it's not like all of them are the same there are a ton of confraternities in the world but specifically another kind called an arch confraternity so we know like diocese and archdiocese here uh it, it defines an arch confraternity as a catholic confraternity empowered to aggregate or affiliate other confraternities of the same nature and to impart to them its indulgences and privileges so that sort of separation is essential now each confraternity comes with its own sort of set of rules maybe spiritual benefits things that you have to follow there have been confraternities in the past that people have accused lay people of pretending to be priests or of performing sacraments that's really not that much of an issue anymore uh and most confraternities i would say for the most part again i'm don't know every confraternity there is to exist um but are very good and, and don't do that don't have lay people just trying to be priests trying to perform sacraments any of that now as an example of a confraternity which is actually uh the confraternity of the person who suggested this to me i want to look at the confraternity of saint nicholas now it says the confraternity of saint nicholas is a public association of the faithful who through prayer fasting and good works are dedicated to the protection of all children from scandalization abuse and trafficking the members of the confraternity by fulfilling its obligations gain many spiritual benefits members enjoy the intercession intercession of saint nicholas great wonder worker bishop and patron of children we pray that as saint nicholas defended the divinity of christ he too by our prayers fasting and good works defend all children from harm so the confraternity of saint nicholas has uh, a, a certain set of like obligations that they have to follow a certain set of rules um, obligations for confraternity members and this is just an example uh, there are many confraternities out there but it's a good idea to see this sort of example to get an idea of how these legitimately work so uh, there are a list of five obligations if you go to the website and they are to attend mass or liturgy on december 6th the feast of saint nicholas and may 9th the memorial of the translation of his relics to pray the litany of Acathist of saint nicholas once a week for the protection of all children and to offer the daily prayer of the confraternity to fast from one meal every wednesday in reparation for sins committed against children in software as health permits another form of abstinence from other pleasures may be substituted priestly members of the confraternity are to offer one mass per month for the confraternity if available these obligations are not binding under pain of sin unfulfilled obligations lead only to a loss of spiritual benefits which could have been gained so it's not necessarily sinful to not follow these specific obligations to a confraternity and that's important to remember 
but it just means the loss of the spiritual benefits. And here are the four spiritual benefits listed for the confraternity of St. Nicholas specifically. Fruits of masses dedicated to the confraternity offered by its priestly members. Fruits of daily and weekly prayers of all confraternity members. Supernatural fruits of the merits, good works, and indulgences of the confraternity. And partial indulgence for members who fulfill the obligations, if granted, by one's local bishop. So those are some of the spiritual benefits. Uh, and again, these confraternities, they come in many different ways or focus to many different things. Maybe they'll have one specific goal. Maybe it'll be more branching out this the confraternity of St. Nicholas specifically dedicated to the protection of children, which is very important uh, in today's world. I'm sure we know this uh, to protect children above all costs. The thing with confraternities is growing closer to Christ is essential to achieving that ultimate goal of getting it to of getting to heaven, but we always talk about how we need other people to go on that journey with us, how sometimes we need other people to lift our cross for us, how, how um, obviously we have God for help, but we also have our brothers and sisters, our neighbors to help us achieve that ultimate goal of getting to heaven, just how as we should help others achieve that ultimate goal as well. I'm not saying that we have to join a confraternity. I'm not saying that it's sinful not to. I'm not saying that it's wrong not to. It may just not be our thing, in which case, hey, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, but nevertheless, confraternities are beneficial in that sense of continuing to journey to get to the kingdom of heaven and having these uh, obligations, having these things that we must do to help us grow spiritually closer to Christ. Uh, and again, it's not a restrictive sort of thing. In fact, things like this within the Catholic Church in general are more liberating. I made a whole video about this, about how the Catholic Church is liberating uh, several weeks ago, if you wish to go check that out. But... Regardless, I think that it's important when we're talking about confraternities to clear up any confusion because it's a lot simpler than people like to make it out to be and to make it more known, to spread the word on it. Because like I said, like people don't talk about it a lot and oftentimes even many Catholics don't really know what a confraternity is and what all it entails. So going into clearing up confusion about that is absolutely essential. I will link the Confraternity of St. Nicholas website in the description down below. If you want to go read more about them, check that out. Or I would also encourage you to check out many other confraternities in general, see what they're about, uh, because like I said, it is uh, an important element of the Catholic Church that does not get discussed enough. So now that the topic is done, do you all know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is, of course... St. Nicholas, the one and only. Now, St. Nicholas is a late 3rd, mid 4th century saint, and of course, he is Santa Claus. When we're talking about St. Nicholas, we need that to be made clear. Now, how did he start, right? What is Santa Claus's origin story? Well, St. Nicholas has a pretty, pretty cool story when we're talking about protecting children, when we're talking about um, the significance of that. He exemplifies that in so many ways because the best known story about Nicholas uh, was when he was charitable towards a poor man. So there was a poor man who could not afford to pay dowries for his three daughters of marriageable age. Now, at that time, if you have three daughters who are marriageable age, you have to be able to pay for them to get married. I mean, that's the simple way of putting it. You just do. And this poor man physically like could not do it. And I'm not going to get into what happens to the daughters if they couldn't get married, but it wasn't good. Their, their life uh, essentially would go downhill. And it's sad that this, that society worked that way at that time, um, but it did. And so St. Nicholas knew this and he wanted to be charitable toward the poor man. He ended up secretly tossing bags of gold, a bag of gold through the poor man's window, not once, not twice, but three separate times so that all three of those girls could get married. And that's how St. Nicholas himself, Santa Claus, started this gift giving um, tradition and continuing to do it now on Christmas time because of his great devotion to uh, Christ, to Christ's birth, uh, which of course we celebrate on Christmas. So when we're talking about the confraternity of St. Nicholas, it's very important to talk about St. Nicholas uh, as a whole because his life, well, we don't know a ton about his early life and stuff. We know how his gift giving, how his charity got started, and it ultimately comes through the protection of children. We can see his great love for children um, through Santa Claus as well, giving 
giving the children gifts every Christmas. Um, again, exemplifying that protection of children, that, that wanting to keep children safe. When we're talking about confraternities, when we're talking about clearing up confusion with that and with the confraternity of St. Nicholas specifically, uh, whenever we feel the need that, that there are children we know who need protecting, whatever the case may be, because there can be a lot of different examples uh, where children need protecting, uh, we can always look to St. Nicholas for help. Again, not pray to him, not worship him, Pray through him. Ask him to pray for us. As we say, St. Nicholas, pray for us. So before you guys click off this video, I am not just a YouTuber. I'm also a Catholic speaker. So I've gone and given talks to a whole bunch of uh, schools, youth groups, churches, events, men's group, women's group, you name it. So I would love to get to go and give a talk to wherever you might be. If you want to reach out to me about coming to speak, please email me directly at kidcatholic1 at gmail.com or go to my website, kidcatholic.com, click the contact me page and email me from there. That would be phenomenal. Also, please go to my website, kidcatholic.com in general. There's so many awesome things you can do on there. You can read about me, you can contact me, uh, all of my videos are up there. Details about my speaking engagements are up there. Uh, your Kid Catholic shop is up there. There's so many awesome things you can do on there. So please go check that out. That's once again, kidcatholic.com. Please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have for future videos. As I mentioned, today's topic was viewer suggested. So I love hearing um, some of your guys' suggestions for what a future video could be on. Please check out all three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description down below, as well as, like I mentioned, the link to the uh, St. Nicholas Confraternity, Confraternity of St. Nicholas website uh, will be in the description down below as well. Please like the video, please click the red subscribe button down below and the button next to it, that way you get notified when I come out with the new video. Guys, once again, I know clicking subscribe doesn't really seem like it does much, but it really does help this ministry to expand, help this ministry to grow, so you uh, hitting that subscribe button would be absolutely greatly appreciated. I hope that you are having a great summer so far, enjoying yourself, free from school for a little bit. Uh, and again, we're just in the start. So let's soak up the summer. Let's enjoy it and hope that it doesn't fly by too fast. This was Keaton of Catholic. I will see you all next week. And hi, Brielle.